Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing very very nice and I'm sending a lot of hugs and positivity to all of you. Hi, if you're new, welcome to the channel. I really hope you enjoyed the content, you enjoyed this video, you enjoyed the other videos on my channel and if you do, please do consider subscribing. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about some really popular books that have been on my TBR either since last year, 2022 or it was on my yearly TBR in 2023 and it's almost been a year since it's been on my TBR at this point or I recently bought them and I want to read them but I am not able to we are going to explore why we are going to explore the reasons together so that if you have read any of these books then you comment down below and you tell me and you motivate me to read these books or two I also want you to see that sometimes even if you are a reader even if you're a beginner uh, in the reading world or even if the book is really popular and really good there are just times where you're not able to read a book for a specific reason those reasons are always personal to every person now without any further ado let's begin the video this book is probably the most popular book or maybe like the oldest book that I have on my TBR and I have it since last year and the book is Daisy, Daisy, <laughs> Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Taylor Jenkins Reid is literally one of my most favorite authors ever even if I have read like only three books by only need actually three books is a lot but still like I have read three books by her two of them are literally five stars one of them is a six star number one I think this book is in an interview or a conversation style or something and I have never read a book like this that does not have flowing story going on I know that there is a plot and a story going on through the interviews but I've just never re read this style of a book and that sort of intimidates me a little bit because what if I don't understand things what if I don't connect to the book the way I do with other TJR books and number two I am scared that this book will disappoint me and I will not like TJR ever again and Dale Jenkins Reid is one of my most favorite authors so I don't want to come to a point where I don't like her writing or I don't like her books and I know that this is not a good reason most of the reasons in this video they're not good reasons but it is what it is and i'm just so scared of not liking this book and not liking tgr that i'm not picking this book up next up we have fourth wing by rebecca yaros this book has rightfully owned its place in this video even though it's fairly new i think i got it like two or three months back only in august so that's like two months back but I have tried to read this book at least like three four times since then i have gone max to like chapter 7 or chapter 10 till now this was supposed to be a part of like so many other vlogs that i start thinking that in this vlog i will read it for sure and i know for a fact that you guys are also waiting for the review of this book but i'm not able to read it number one this book is like just look at it it does not look like a like a book to me i mean it is a book but it's too beautiful okay look at the gold foiling look at the dragons it just looks more like a prize that you win and whenever i start reading it i don't get the feeling that i am reading a book i feel like i'm reading some sort of like a scripture or something and that sort of intimidates me number two again it's very very high and every time i start reading it and i read few chapters i'm like am i enjoying it enough oh my god am i understanding everything oh my god am i going to retain all of the information because there's there is so much in information in the first few chapters i feel like sometimes we put so many expectations on a book simply because it is hype simply because so many other people enjoyed it and you are scared whether you will enjoy it or not and that is happening with me but what i want to do is read this book without those things in my head and number three it's part of a series a series that is going to go on for years and the second book is fortunately probably coming out this year itself so that is a good thing but there are other parts that are going to come in the next few years and i don't know if i'm ready to sign up for that which is why i've not read it till now i have another video in my mind that i want to read this book for probably by the end of this month itself so i will probably finish reading it but if you have motivation for me if you've read this book already whatever it is comment down below so that i can get over all of my fears and start reading it next up we have the house in the cerulean sea by tj clune this i think is a fantasy or a sci-fi one of those novels and the reason i'm not able to read it is one because i think it is sci-fi and i have never read a sci-fi book i think i've read like a couple of sci-fi books here and there but every single time i start reading a sci-fi book i am scared that i'm not smart enough for it or that i will not understand the sci-fi part of it the reason i really really want to read it is because so many of you guys have told me that this is the most heartwarming book ever and the reviews that i've seen on instagram also one of the most heartwarming books ever i think a sequel is also coming for this book now but still 
I'm just like, if it is sci-fi, what if I don't understand it? What if I'm dumb? Next up, we have Tomb of Sand by Gitanjali Shri. This book, I think, was nominated for the JCB Prize and winner of the International Booker Prize of 2022. And I think when it was nominated for the JCB Prize, I instantly bought it. I did not even think about it for like one second because I really wanted to read it. But I have not read it because one, it's very thick. I have read thick books, but it is thicker than all of them. I think it's like... Like 800 pages almost 750 pages 750 pages that wouldn't be a problem because i do want to read thick books this year so that's fine right but if we come to reason number two which is complementing reason number one because of which i'm not reading this book and reason number two is that i have heard that this book is more like no plot just vibes kind of a book and i think once you surpass like two three hundred pages that is when this book gets good and i just don't think that i have been in a space where I can dedicate so much of myself to a book for no plot, just vibes. On the other hand, it is a prize winner. I know the plot of it a little bit, like the blurb, I have read it. And I have only and only heard good things about it. So I really, really want to read it. But I just am not able to gather the courage to take a risk and start reading an eight, almost 800 pages book which has no plot because I'm like what if I get bored and I drop it much later when I do have the time and I do read it I will enjoy it and I'll come to know that this is like the best book ever what if I don't feel like that right now so I'm always scared about that and so I don't pick up this book almost like the similar reason we have The Goldfinch by Donna Tart. I actually started reading this book and I was 25 pages into the book and then I dropped it because number one the start of the book was literally the most beautiful thing i have ever read and i don't know why but that overwhelmed me because of just like just because of how amazing the writing was because for a few months like for the two past two three months especially like in the rainy season i like to read books that have like huge plots or books that i can read fairly quickly like fast-paced books because it's raining outside and i'm already in a very gloomy mindset it is just how i am in those phases i do not have like the focus or the attention span to sit and read books that i should read slowly and i have barely read books like that i think in the past two three months even if i do pick up a book thinking that i'll read it slowly it turns out to be a book full of story and full of plot it's fairly fast paced even if it is beautiful writing this one on the other hand i think it is one of the books that i picked up during that phase thinking that it's also going to be fast paced because the blurb sounds like it is something that is going to be fast paced it is a story of a teenager whose mother dies and i think he steals a painting something like that so it does sound fairly fast paced so i picked it up but then the writing was gorgeous and i just knew that i want to read it in like a cozy cozy time where i can take at least a week to finish this book this book again has oh my god this is thicker than doom of sand Ooh it's not stopping it's not stopping it's just it's just going on and on 864 pages great now that's another reason i'm not gonna pick up this book for sure the writing was so beautiful that i want to dedicate a good amount of time to it maybe like 10 14 days and if i am being very completely honest being a booktuber and having the responsibility of making videos every week i do want to be able to read more books so that i have new recommendations for you guys so that i can uh, make more youtube videos for you guys make more vlogs things like that and i just feel like if i read this book i'm going to be sucked into it i'm probably going to risk a reading slump after it because it'll be so good these are not reasons that you should not read a book because of like these are reasons why you should definitely read a book but it, it has become reasons why i am not reading this book next up we have babel by rf kuang i have only read yellow face by rf kuang and i literally fell in love with the writing style i have read around 100 150 pages of the poppy war and i really like the writing style in that also so i know for sure that i'm going to love this book and i did start reading this book too i think i went 10 or 15 pages into it till the time where the guy robin the little fellow the little guy who is saved and then he's taken oxford to babel i have read it till day one i waited so long 
to save up like a lot of money and then buy this book like the hardcover version of this book but now that i have it again i don't get that feeling that like i want to read this book the edition of a book matters a lot to me for some reason when it comes to reading it i think i'm easily able to read like paperback book there are some books which i have two editions of and for example like they're both paperbacks only but one of them seems a little intimidating to me and so i won't get to it but when the same book is in some other form format i get in, get to it instantly and i finish it in like a day i don't know what it is but the edition of the book matters a lot to me and i don't feel like this is the edition of the book that is motivating me to read this book it is intimidating for sure i think this book is also about very complex topics like colonization and things like that and i really really want to savor every single word of this book but i don't know when i will get comfortable with this edition of the book i went to crossword and i was like i'm just gonna buy it who cares it was equal to the money that i paid for the hardback so i didn't buy it i do think that if i had the paperback version i would be able to read this book much quicker because it would just seem less intimidating but it is what it is next up we have one for my enemy by olivy blake olivy blake again i have read two books by her she's one of my most favorite authors till now she's always writing these exceptional things and so i am desperate to read this book but olivy blake takes quite some time like around 50 to 70 70 to 100 pages for me to start getting into the book and once i am sucked into the book then there's no stopping because after those 70 pages i cannot keep the book down that is what has happened with masters of death and that is exactly what happened with alone with you in the ether also but those 70 pages are complex they're really really complex I think it's written in the format of a play these acts and all and i saw it and i was instantly intimidated i did read like shakespeare and all when i was in school but i don't remember anything about it at all so if it is something like that then i'm not going to understand it and it's going to take me time like 70 to 100 pages for me to get into the book but do i really want to read a romance that is like that but then on the other hand i read alone with you in ether which is a romance by her it's one of like the my most favorite books ever so it's a complex thing but i think that is the reason i keep putting this book off i keep receiving books which are just like easier to get into next up we have the curious incident of the dog in the night time one there's a dead dog on the cover and i am so scared that there's animal cruelty or something if anything brutal happens to it i just i it's very difficult for me to shake it off there are so many dark things i read and i am still able to like digest it it gets really dark sometimes but i'm able to digest it but whenever there is something there is like some brutality that is happening to animals it's very difficult for me to shake it off digest it move on things like that and so i'm not reading it and two it's also a sad book if there was animal brutality but it was like a happy heartwarming book then i would read it i think it's also a sad book the mixture is just not sitting right and so even though i'm extremely desperate to read this book and i have picked it up at least a million times i keep putting it back and i keep reading other books because I don't want to get that sort of sad. Next up, we have Maps of Our Spectacular Bodies by Maddie Mortmere. This one, I don't know how popular it is, but I remember that I saw it in multiple places and that is why I bought it. It's on my yearly TBR. I got it like in the beginning of the year itself for this year because I wanted to read it this year. And because in this book, cancer that is residing inside this woman's body is talking about the woman's body and like her life. And I think it's such an interesting premise. I saw on the inside and the writing style looks like it's very poetic it's written in that poetic format and as soon as i saw that format i was like oh my god i don't know if i'm gonna read this or not or oh my god it's not the kind of a book that i can just pick up whenever i want to because i don't read much poetry the only poetry books that i have read till now are poetry books for beginners i do want to get into complex poetry simply because it's just like a beautiful beautiful world but it is a whole world in itself and i just never got into it and so i'm not someone who understands poetry very well and that is why i am so scared that when i read this book because it's written in such a poetic style what if i don't understand it next up we have the starless sea by erin morgenstone morgenstone this one is a fantasy and i keep reading the blurb but i don't remember <laughs> what the book is about even if i keep reading the blurb for some reason but the reason i'm not reading this book is because one the text inside is literally the smallest text ever and that scares me too i remember reading the night circus by erin morgenstern and that book is slow it is so so 
slow. I am scared that this book also is going to be extremely slow. The Knights of this is also very beautiful. So I know that this is going to be beautiful for sure and it's going to be magical. I really want to get back into that magical world myself. And I think a few of you commented on my video, on my winter TBR video or something, that the Starless Sea is a good winter book. So I do want to put it on my winter TBR and read it in winters itself. But because of the text and because the mix of the fact that it's a slow book that has small text i am not starting this book and i am intimidated so next we have the serpent and dove series then i have the entire series there are three books and it's an enemies to lovers book and it's about a witch and a witch hunter and all of it sounds so good because the witch and the witch hunter have to get married yes it's literally the perfect book for me but one it's been too long since it's been on my tbr and sometimes when books have been on my tbr for a very very long time i completely forget about them and i get bored with it <laughs> because i'll just look at them and i'll be like meh because there'll be so many other new books or new releases that come into my radar so i keep reading them probably not a good thing but it is what it is that is one of the reasons why i have not read it and secondly i have heard mixed reviews about this and i'm just like what if i have such high expectations and it's not as good of an enemies to lovers as i have read like the other uh enemies to lovers books and i love the enemies to lovers trope and I don't want to start hating it. In the end, we have a book which is on my TBR since three years at this point, and the book is Killing Commendator by Murakami. It is gigantic. And yes, that would be a reason why I'm not reading this book, but it is not. The reason I'm not reading this book is because actually it is kind of like that because Murakami writes crazy stuff, okay? And the premise of this book is very interesting. I think art comes alive or a painting comes alive or something like that. And you get to read the journey of that. I don't exactly remember, but I think it's an artist's journey and it's very, very interesting for sure. But I don't know if I can take that much craziness of Murakami in such huge amount. So if you have read this book, please tell me, is it easy to read or is it not? Even if it takes time and even if it is not easy to read, it's not like I won't read it. I will, but I need to be prepared for it. And with that, we come towards the end of the video. Wait, I think I do want to talk about one more book because you guys have been asking me for it. We have the Ram Chandra series, which I really want to read, but I'm not reading. Probably not going to read it this year. And the reason is one, I loved the actually there's only one reason and this is the reason i loved the immortal meluha the shiva trilogy so so much so much it's it's one of the best things that i have read this year and i have seen people who love the shiva trilogy hate the ram chandra series and i don't know if i am ready for that I, i've also heard that the world building and everything in this series is very heavy it's not like the shiva trilogy shiva trilogy it was like a very good world and the world building was good but it was very very easy to consume but i've heard that it's not as easy to consume in this and it gets too technical again we have the sci-fi element in it too even though it's a mythology series and that is the reason i am not reading it i'm so sorry i know you guys want the vlog but i'm just not able to bring myself to read it get disappointed or not understand it or get bored and shatter the image of amisha's book or even like the shiva trilogy in my head and so i'm not reading it so if you've read it please motivate me i do want to read it myself but yeah, that was not part of the plan, but I'm just going to keep it there. With that, we come towards the end of the video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please do subscribe. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Bye.